Good afternoon. Hey, my name is Scott. Today we're working on my daughter's 01 Grand Am GT. Uh, the problem today is that the horn doesn't work. Um, fortunately, uh, my neighbor Dwayne, who owns Real Fixes Real Fast, is going to walk me through diagnosing this problem and trying to find the correct solution. Uh, we have a wiring schematic that we've started with and basically we're going to work from the simplest aspect moving away to the most complex. As we look at the diagram, here's what we found. Our focus is the horn itself because it should be working and it isn't. It gets its ground and the continuity in the horn brings that ground up to the horn relay and it stops at the open. There's another ground at the steering wheel in the turn signal switch and then there's another ground in the BCM. Both of those can supply a ground to the circuit. Here's our fuse, and that fuse is hot at all times, which is going to allow the voltage to travel through the circuit down to the horn relay, and it'll stop at the open. That's the action side of the relay. There's another path in this circuit that allows the voltage to go through the horn relay on the control side, and that voltage is going to travel down to the steering wheel, and then it's also going to split off and let the voltage travel over to the BCM so that the BCM will be able to control that part of the circuit. So to honk the horn we should be able to push in the center of the steering wheel but nothing happens. We don't hear any horn sound. So to test the entire circuit all we do is use our scanner and command the horn on. When we do that we can hear that the horn does honk. So that tells us the entire circuit everything the horn the relay the grounds the power everything is good except the horn switch because when we push on that button the horn doesn't work so our horn switch is where we needed to focus so what we looked at initially was the fuse that's the easiest thing that you should always look at first is the fuse from there um, next check is the relay so in order to do this we hooked it up to a scanner and we were able to bypass the relay and trip the horn so we know everything on the downside is working. The horns are working, the relay is good, and the fuse is good. What that told us according to this schematic is that the problem lies in the clock spring and that's where we're going to go from here to find our problem. So moving forward we're going to show you how to take apart the steering wheel column and get to the clock spring itself. Before we begin the procedure of uh, getting into the steering wheel to look for the clock spring we want to disable the airbag on this particular vehicle. By doing so, we should simply take off the fuse panel on the driver's side, look for the fuse that controls the airbag, pull it, and then you also have to disassemble. There's a wiring harness in here. You have to pull that wiring harness apart. This is on the driver's side on this 01 Grand Am GT. We'll then have to do the same on the passenger side as well. So that's on this particular vehicle. Be sure to check your manual for your particular vehicle to see if the procedures are the same or slightly different. So the first thing we need to do is remove, there's a, there's a plastic shroud that goes around the back side of the steering wheel. There's two little Allen head bolts in the bottom of this. You'll simply take those out and be able to separate that and get a better look at what you have going on. So we're going to do that right now. I didn't know what there's actually a third one down here. I said two. All right. So we've removed all three. There was three instead of two. We've removed all three. Now we should be able to separate our housing. Okay, for the next part of the procedure, now that we have the shroud off and we can see that we need to remove the airbag to get to um, where our horn switch is at, you're going to need a T30 Torx bit screwdriver. Uh, both of the screws will be located back in behind the airbag. For this particular application, you have to turn the steering wheel in order to gain access from the back side. And we're going to go ahead and take both of those torque bits out and that will allow us to re then remove the airbag assembly and get a better look at what we're trying to do here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and remove the airbag assembly. Now that we've pulled it aside, 
discovered a loose wire hanging here. This might be the culprit to our uh, problem. If we look around through the inside here trying to determine here's a spade connecting a ground wire, this is a positive wire. Looks like this might be where this wire goes. Let's go ahead and take it to the bottom and ground it out. And that would be our causative problem right there. So now we have to determine how to go ahead and attach this wire back to complete our circuit. Okay, as I said earlier, as we discovered when we pulled the airbag off, we had a wire that was disconnected uh, from a fitting up inside the column. Um, once we removed the spring and the part that holds it in place, we identified that this little brass fitting is what rides around the clock spring and needed to be attached to the end of this wire. Now, as you can see, this has already been crimped down, so using this again would be almost impossible. When we called to find a replacement wire, we discovered for, that for this year of Grand Am, they don't just sell the wire, you have to buy the whole airbag just to get the wire and the uh, contact. So what we opted to do, we found a different year where this is a later year where they actually made a terminal this would fit on and replace this this piece what we're going to do now for fifteen dollars instead of several hundred for an airbag is simply take this piece which all matches up we're going to cut it here cut this off splice those two together and we should be back in business now some of you may be saying oh wait a minute i don't want to go cutting wires this is the airbag system i've always heard that's a problem let's talk about that a second. When you look at the front side of this airbag unit, it is the airbag, but if you look very close, there's two horn buttons, just to the left and just to the right of center. So there's actually two horn contacts in here. So the wire we're talking about is not the airbag wire, it's just the wire for the horn contacts. It's standard on all cars that any wires having to do with the airbag are yellow. The yellow wire is going right to the center, which is your airbag. So we're not going to mess with the yellow wire. We're just talking about the red wire. Now the red wire is simply a copper stranded wire coated with insulation. Now since it broke from the contact that was in there, we're going to simply cut that end off and splice a new wire into it. Before uh, we actually complete the whole process and get everything crimped together, we definitely want to double check and make sure that this is our problem. So as you can see, this piece fits down in the hole and there will be a little tab on the end of this plastic. We got to get it to go in, compress the spring, here we go. Now it's in place. You can see the plastic holds the spring in place and the brass tab will be riding on the clock spring. Now to complete the circuit we should be able to hold these two contacts together and our horn works. This is the piece, the new piece that we're going to be attaching to the existing wire. I've already cut the spade type end off of this because we're going to solder these two pieces together. We're going to solder them together. We're also going to use a piece of heat sh uh, shrink wrap tubing to complete our whole process. So I'm going to go ahead and slip it on the existing wire, push it out of the way. Now we're going to prep both of these ends. It's a very cool handy tool for working in tight spaces. It's just a little vise that you can attach to any metal surface. It gives us an area to work with our solder on. So we're going to go ahead, put one end in, Put the other end in. All right, we've kind of got this ready to solder. Okay, so we're going to solder this together. We're going to use something that's new to me, actually. It's called uh, Paste Bond. It's a different kind of solder that you actually apply and then hit with a torch. Uh, so we're going to be using this product today.
All right. Okay, so we have our soldered connection. Drag the shrink wrap up. And there we have it. Piece is now ready to put back. Again, you want to line up a little tab on this plastic. Grab my flashlight here. You can see exactly where it goes. Fit it down in the hole. Give it just a little turn clockwise. And we should be good. Okay, now we have our part back in place, all soldered up with our new wire. Let's see if it works. And we have a horn that works. Now all we have to do... Put our airbag back in place. Attach the two screws to the back side. Put our shroud on. And we should have this project complete.